Hello guys, this is Good Like, and we're back to Let's Code, a series where I will try to write an application that replaces and improves upon the functionality of YouTube's Subbox. Once again, we have quite a gap between this and the last episode, and honestly, I realized something. I really don't feel like making these videos. At least not the way that I've been doing them. I really don't like the way they turn out either. Uh, it feels like I'm very incoherent when I'm just talking over me coding and it feels like all of that just gets in the way of actually producing the video. While I did feel quite hyped about it a couple of times, the, the reality of the situation is it just isn't working and it's not making me produce videos. So we're gonna do some changes to perhaps make it work better. Always gotta be open to changes, that's what Agile is all about. Try things until something works. Hey! So here we are trying things. The basic gist of what I'm going to do differently is this. Instead of recording myself for 30 minutes coding whatever the fucking talking shit, I'm going to code as much as I feel like, in one sitting anyway, <laughs> and before every session I will record a video like this, where I go over the things that I've done in previous session. This way, instead of me rambling as I type away at my very loud keyboard, you will get to see a kind of a review, if you will, of the things that I've done, and somewhat what I plan to do next. I'll try to make all the changes more granular in GitHub in the future, but this time I just didn't do it, so I just wrote it down in this text file instead. So to go over, I've renamed some method in the test classes somewhere. God knows where, it's probably here, and it's not here, it's... Actually, now in this YouTube channel mock thing, yeah, th this this is two things. So I, I moved all of the methods and values that I uh, needed into a separate class entirely because I needed to reuse it in multiple test classes, both YouTube channel test and YouTube channel search test. Make use of the uh, channel. Well, obviously the YouTube channel test does so to test the channel itself, whereas YouTube channel search has to return channels. So that's why I decided to put it in a separate object. I wouldn't necessarily say this is an appropriate way to do it. You could probably do it uh, with better naming and stuff, but uh, I thought for now it will do, and if there's problems or if I think of something better, I'll rename it at that time. There was an issue with asserts on null. Our assertion here had a question mark instead of a type variable. What that did was it wouldn't allow you to use it properly with lambdas. Whereas now, you can actually use it with lambdas without any issue. Well, I believe you still need to give the actual value like here. I, I, I don't think you can avoid this. As you can see, it, it doesn't automatically cast to the right object, but if it is an object, then you don't have to worry. Or I assume if it is a lambda expression in which the type is clear. And Either way, it's it's slightly better. Like, there was a point where you actually had to completely cast the entire expression into a its interface type, which was completely unacceptable, and now it works without that, so that's great. Right, require not null override for just title. This is an important one, as I've realized that we have a method uh, that basically says, uh, hey, uh, check if this object is null and throw an exception if that's the case, otherwise return it. But we also have an overload of this method. Uh, did I write override? Yeah, I meant overload. Where we pass in the object and then the title. So that we can specify how to name the object. So as you can see here, we can have a very clear, at least for the most part, uh, descriptions of the object we're dealing with. The problem, however, is because 
technically, title is also an object. It is uh, invisible to the rest of the application that isn't in this package, and only utilities are going to be here. The key point here is that if you by accident omit the object and only put the title, obviously the check will check the title. And more than likely, if you put in the title, you put it via titled method, which always produces a non-null value. Uh, obviously, you can also just write down null, but who's going to write not null, null? That's silly. So it was possible to essentially forget the title, and in order to fix that issue, I overloaded it again with only the title, and uh, now if you forget the object but you put in the title, you won't get it back, which will help you to discover it, and also during testing you will get a different type of exception. YouTube channel wrap-up. So yes, in YouTube channel we now have uh, it completely implemented for now as far as we are concerned. We have our uh, channel title and we have the URL which uh, takes a prefix which is the general YouTube channel prefix and the channel ID both from the search result. And of course we have tests for it. Very simple, very clean. I'm, I call it getters even though technically URL is not a getter but well. What can you do? I added require positive. Require positive is a method which checks if an integer is positive. It was one of the conditions in our YouTube channel search where we are checking that the max results is positive. I do believe that we're going to be working with some integers here and there which need to be positive, so this is a reasonable approach. Obviously, I don't expect our application to actually ever fall into these. These are fail safes, and uh, wherever we're going to get something like user input, which this class will not deal with user input, it's intended to be used via API by the application. Whenever we actually get user input, then that input will be sanitized and uh, cleaned up. But just in case we screw up and forget some condition, maybe let you know, zero slip, this extra check will make sure that things crash. Uh, it's just more of a safeguard, it's not actually going to be that important. I do think these are important because they help you define the API. Specifically, we're now dealing with search API. I don't have any documentation yet, but when I will add it, and I will add it because this is an interface, and I do believe that interfaces should have documentation. Like, if you're going to document nothing, you should still document your interface APIs because they need to define a contract so that you, first of all, know what to expect when you have an implementation and also know how to implement it in the first place. So what's allowed and what's not allowed for that particular interface. If you don't define these, it becomes really hard to actually figure out what's going on in the application. Well, technically, if you, all of your interfaces are just allowing anything anyway and have no contracts then of course you will see no value in that but i think you should strive to create interfaces that actually commit to doing a specific thing in a specific way not over commit don't go too far into details but let's say in this search i absolutely want to commit that you know the max results need to be positive. We could, for example, have a limiter on how high the max results can go in the future as well. So we'll see, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly will happen, but uh, it's important to have these APIs uh, defined so you know what's going on. And uh, since we're now back to YouTube channel search, it finally has come the time to make this test pass, which requires us to, well, to produce a channel, I have decided to use my own channel as a bit of a random example. Usually when I write mock objects in tests, I often, if I have the ability, I strive to use real values as much as possible. It helps give you perspective. You could argue that in some cases this could be deceptive if, uh, for example, the channel IDs could be just about whatever. But in cases specifically like this, where you know that channel IDs are going to be more or less of this format pretty much all the time, it's 
in my opinion, a really good idea to stick to realistic things instead of, let's say, having the ID be 1. Even though I change 1, I believe all the tests will still pass except the one that didn't pass. Yeah, the only thing that's not passing is the same test that didn't pass before because we haven't implemented YouTube API mocking yet. So if you can really have any value you want anyway, why not have one that's actually real and will uh, help you reason about the reality of the situation? Not to mention that if these are somewhat real, in some cases you can also make use of them in integration tests, doubling down on the reusability but that's really minor it's not that important the important aspect is i like it this way because it then is easy to refer and easy to understand what you're looking at so ultimately i decided to mock out http transport why is this okay so if we go back to the youtube api spike uh, we are using here the net http transport which is implementing, I believe, or extending, sorry, the abstract class HTTP transport. So this is what I will have to implement, or mock out, rather. And the main reason I'm doing this is because I think it will be quite easy. Ultimately, what I understand from this class is that all it does is uh, wrap making an HTTP request and getting the result which means the mocking of that would be URL to JSON. So I would just need to specify in the mock, if I get this URL, give me this JSON. And uh, I think that's very good. It's very easy to understand and work around. We're going to have to deal with HTTP transport anyway, because I don't want to use the default HTTP transport. Instead, I want to write a... HTTP transport that uses the HTTP library that we use, which is, I believe, the OKHTTP OK from Square. I'll look into it and perhaps they already provide an, an implementation. It's perfectly possible. Maybe someone also has provided one via other random library. So then we'll avoid that one step of having to implement it ourselves. But the main reason I want to do that is because I just you know, I want to use HTTP URL across the application and that will uh, make it uh, simpler. Though, obviously, I wouldn't have to. I definitely don't think I need to use that. I think even just sticking to net HTTP transfer, everything would work. But uh, also for the sake of uh, understanding better the structure, that seems like a good idea. If I ever do decide to change the way I access YouTube API from using their Java classes to straight up using their REST API, ultimately I would have to write something similar to their Java classes. Of course, I would do it a bit differently probably. Otherwise, why, why even change it? But whatever I would do would definitely not have access to any of these classes. And therefore, uh, if I were to write tests mocking this out, uh, well, let's just say I wouldn't be having an easy time rewriting all the tests. Unlike with something like Hibernate, which is a lot more pervasive and therefore you can be much more assured that uh, you're probably going to keep using it, I don't necessarily trust this library yet. So far, the only problem I have is the fact that I have to set the key with the builder request. And this seems really daft because that means I need to inject the key into every single class that uses the API instead of just doing it once. One thing that may be possible is to do it inside the HTTP transport where you get the URL, you could just slap the key as an extra parameter on top of this URL and be done with it. So that's more or less my goal for this next sit down is to take care of this HTTP transport, mock it out and finish the YouTube search, YouTube channel search specifically and see what happens. Uh, so hopefully next video I will be starting with uh, explaining how that went. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.